Hi everybody, here is our definitive guide to making rose hip syrup. Do give yourself plenty of time to do this activity. Um, you probably need a whole afternoon or a whole morning um, as it's quite involved. There will be moments of inertia and waiting um, at least an hour's worth. Um, so have a good book to hand or something else that you can do in the meantime. Um, but it really is worth doing this, so don't let it put you off. Do it along with me and then we'll feel like we're doing it together. Good morning everybody, it's just me, Susie, today. Bodie's at school, but we're going to make some rose hip syrup together. Um, I couldn't wait any longer, I couldn't wait for Bodie to come home because our hips are getting a bit, some of them are getting a little bit squishy and the fruit flies are getting quite interested in them. So I thought it, we ought to, to get going. So what we're gonna need um, for rose hip syrup is rose hips washed. So give them a good rinse around in a colander just to get any mud and any bits and pieces off. And then you're gonna need to weigh them to see how many you've got. Um, so making sure you, you weigh that. We've got about 600 grams. So um, my recipe is for one kilo. Um, so the water and everything that you have to add is based around a kilo of rose hips. It's not an exact science. So I'm just gonna roughly halve the recipe for the sugar and the water. Um, and I suggest you do the same thing. If you've got roughly a quarter of a kilo, then divide it by four. You know, you know what to do, you know what to do. We're gonna need some sugar um, we've got some Fair trade golden natural sugar because um, we don't really like the white refined stuff in our house. You're going to need something to put the syrup in. Um, if it's going to be a gift, these little kilner bottles are lovely. You can get them online fairly um, fairly cheap. I think you can also get them in places like Dunelm Mill and things um, when we're allowed back out to the shops. Um, but online, you know, works well and they're lovely because you can put little sticky labels on them and they look really Christmassy. So if you're giving it away as a gift, that's a nice idea. Um, or you can just use any old kind of jar that you've used. This was sort of olives that we've had. Um, and just make sure that you sterilise whatever you're going to put the, the syrup into because you don't want any bugs and things to get into your syrup. And all you need to do for that is just fill... Um, a bowl with boiling water like in your sink and then just put your jars and things in in the boiling water for you know I don't know, about 10 minutes or something give them a shush about once in a while and then bring them out and dry them and then they're all sterilized ready to use you're going to need your measuring jug trusty measuring jug you're going to need something like the muslin square so you can see this fabric's really quite transparent um, this I happen to have loads of muslin squares in my cupboard because I do do bits of cooking and, and messing around um, with herbs and so forth but if you don't have a muslin square you could use a pair of tights um, they're quite useful basically you want something which is going to let most of the mixture through um, but it's going to keep kind of the, the itchy seeds and the skin and all the bits behind so just find yourself a little square or a pair of tights or something like that that you can strain your liquid through you're going to need a colander Ta -da! a big bowl and you're going to need a decent sized saucepan so we're, this is our stew pot um, and I, I tend to use that things like jam making and, and stuff as well as delicious stews and soups <laughs> Um, so those are the main things that you're going to need. Wash away your rose hips. Um, and I'm going to add, I'm going to attach the recipe to this post so that um, you've got the recipe to hand. But basically for one kilo of rose hips, you need the same amount of sugar. So that's quite handy. So if you've only got 600 uh, 600 grams like I have, I would use 600 grams of sugar. And then you'll want two litres per kilo. So if I've got roughly half um, a, a, a kilo of rose hips, I want half of that amount. So probably just over a litre of water to begin with. Okay, so hopefully that's all making sense. 
um, and I'll see you in a second as we do the next stage. So the next stage, um, clean hands, this one, and I forgot to say that you need a big knife <laughs> or something to chop up your hips. And I'm gonna take my ring off um, because I don't want sticky goop because they can be a bit sticky these, um, especially if they're quite ripe. And what we're doing is we're just roughly chopping um, the rose hips. So we do a few at a time so they don't roll all over the shop. Someone the other day said to me, would, would you use a blender um, to do it? And I said I wouldn't because I think that you'd probably blend them to oblivion and lose all the goodness. Um, and also there's just something really nice and mindful about doing it by hand, um, just to give yourself a bit of time. So, you know, get rid of everyone else in the house, <laughs> um, unless you want to do it with your children as well, which can be really nice, obviously. Um, but just to give yourself a bit of time to do this, because I always believe when you make food and you do things like this, you put a bit of your energy into it, your own energy. So trying to make sure you're in a good headspace, you've got plenty of time, you're not in a rush, put some good music on, make a nice cup of tea, um, and just start to just gently work your way through it. So I'm only just literally roughly chopping um, the hips to see if I can make sure I've got at least, they're at least in half, so they're exposed. When they're a bit more goopy, um, then you'll find that they probably will just smoosh anyway. Good words, goopy and smoosh. You hear those a lot on very professional um, professional kitchens. Um, so yeah, just what you can with these, chop them up. And then once you've chopped them to a level that you're happy with, you can see how smooshed mine are now. I'm just gonna pick them up and drop them in my saucepan, which is here. And I'm gonna work my way through all of my rose hips until I'm done. So I won't make you watch me do loads. Um, I'll see you when I've, I've finished. Okay, so here are my chopped, smooshed um, berries. And this is probably the most labour intensive bit of the process. So um, well done uh, if you manage to do it all by hand. Um, I do think it really makes a difference. So now we add the water. So for my 600 grams of rose hips, I'm going to add a litre of water to the mix. So if you just bear with me while I fill up my measuring jug again and add another litre. Don't worry about bits of stalk and the odd bit of leaf. It really doesn't matter because all of it's going to be strained in the end anyway. And then pop it on and bring it up to the boil. So have it on the oven. Get yourself a little something wooden spoon just to give it a stir about. And you just need to bring it to the boil. You could even um, put boiled water in already. So you could measure out um, a litre or so of, of boiling water and add to the hips, which would probably speed things up a little bit. Um, but I'll see you in a minute when my rose hips are boiling. So my hips are boiling and bubbling away a good one over here. Um, once it's up to the boil, um, you need to turn them off and you need to cover them and leave them to infuse gently for half an hour. I long ago lost the lid to my saucepan. I think I melted the, the handle, if I recall, on one foolish day. Um, so I'm just gonna cover my big pan with some foil. Um, so I've turned off the heat, covering it in foil, and I'll see you in half an hour for the next bit. Okay, so my rose hips have been infusing for half an hour and they now, they look and smell, well they smell amazing, they look a bit of a mess, <laughs> but yeah, have a good whiff, just really yummy, fruity smell. So just give them a little stir around and then we're going to take a bowl and a colander and you're going to pop your muslin inside your colander really carefully, maybe just sort of tucking it in so it doesn't fall. Or your tights or whatever you've 
managed to find a bit of neck curtain that can also work really well anything you can find and then you're going to pour in whoops let me just retrieve the corner of my muslin <laughs> pour in your mixture just gradually so that it can seep through there's going to be a lot of flesh and seeds left behind and it will take a while to drip through down into the bowl and you can use your, a spoon as well to help kind of push it through so just keep stirring it and pushing it and it will gradually drip through the muslin down into the bowl you could also use a sieve um, here and actually in retrospect I think I might have used a sieve last time this is quite deep the colander so you might want to try it with a more shallow sieve um, you, you're going to need to keep these rose hips because we're going to boil them again so basically we haven't got all the goodness out yet um, so we're going to need to add some more water again so while that's dripping through you're going to need about half as much water as you used originally so I used a litre so now I'm going to use half a litre of water so once I've drained and all this has come all the way through the muslin into the bowl I'm going to put the remains back into the saucepan with another half litre of water and I'm going to repeat what I did before bringing it up to the boil and leaving it to infuse for half an hour once all your mixtures in here and it's dripping through when you feel like most of it has stopped coming out you've given it a good stir and a stodge um, and most of the the liquid is gone then you can take up the corners whoops of your muslin lift it up try not to spill any of the contents and you can kind of squeeze it from the outside so be careful because it is hot and look how much more I'm getting out okay you might want to put a pair of rubber gloves on that will keep you a bit more protected from the heat um, so just squeezing it until all of your juice has come out once you've squeezed most of the juice out put the rest back into the pan and we repeat step one again just with half the amount of water so I'll see you in half an hour. I also um, rinsed my muslin out. So once I put the pulp back into the pan again, and I did actually swap to a sieve because I found it was a lot shallower and it was a lot easier to manage. Um, but I've rinsed out my muslin and I'm going to put it back in ready for the next go. Okay, so we've completed the second infusion. Um, and what I've done is put the first lot into a separate bowl. Um, so I'm just gonna put that to one side and then I'm gonna strain the new lot bit by bit through this muslin um, so that I can really squeeze out all the goodness. So you are gonna have to get some more messy hands, I'm afraid, um, but that's part of the fun. So this is quite fun, the squeezing through. It looks like a looks like a heart or something grim that we've just taken out of a body I don't know oh but just squeezing the muslin keeping it tight so I've twisted the top to sort of keep the stuff in the middle and then just squeezing through so all the juice goes down and into the bowl and now this is the, like the last time we're using this pulp we really want to get the most out of it because as usual with stuff like this it's the bits that get left behind almost that contain the good stuff so really squidging it till you can get as much out as you possibly can and then having your little compost bin to the side um, so that you can put the the remainder of the pulp just drop it straight into that compost bin get rid of the seeds and then give your muzzy a quick rinse under the tap um, and then repeat until you've got rid of all of your mixture. Okay, so now we have our two lots of juice that we've strained up. And um, wash up your saucepan and then add your two lots of juice back into the pot, combining them together. Give them a good shake, make sure all the goodness is really 
gone into the pan. So once you've got your two, um, two bowls worth of goodness in the uh, saucepan, you need to boil it for quite a while because you want it to reduce down. Um, the recipe I'm using um, says to reduce it by about half, um, which to me always seems quite a lot to lose. Um, but what it does mean is the reduction that you're left with is really um, full of goodness. So bring it, bring it to the boil, let it boil away, use your instincts, it doesn't have to be exact, honestly, it really doesn't. Um, and then once it's boiled down, um, that's the point when we're going to add the sugar. Uh, and now we add the sugar um, and we're going to need to have the heat underneath. Um, so we're going to um, have the heat quite high um, on this. It's a bit like jam making um, in a way um, because we need to melt the sugar um, inside. So this is when you get a real wake up call <laughs> as to how much sugar is going in your cooking. I always think this is why it's brilliant to home bake because then you know what goes in and you can actually remind yourself that I'm about to put an entire bag uh, of sugar, 600 grams of sugar into this. So when you come to have your syrup, maybe you'll remember, oh, maybe I shouldn't have like a whole cup's worth. Perhaps I'll just have a little thimble full <laughs> or not. <laughs> so pop your sugar in. And I'm actually going to have to add a little bit extra because this is only 500 grams, I think, this one. Yes, 500 grams. Um, so I'm going to have to add another 100 grams into there because it's obviously, obviously 500 grams isn't enough. <laughs> and the heat's on now underneath. And I'm just slowly, slowly stirring that sugar into the mixture and this is the point um, in the process when I think it's nice to put your good intentions into the mixture so there's just something of the old witch in me but when you're stirring you're stirring your mixture together you could just maybe send your love and your well wishing into the mixture that you're making particularly if you're giving this as gifts for Christmas and like maybe remembering why we're making this because it's so good for the immune system so much vitamin c huge amounts of vitamin c in a rose hip but also thinking about the qualities of the rose and the flower you know normally associated with love um so you know it's quite a loving berry to put into a mixture also maybe thinking about the heart and actually that maybe this plant will give you strength of heart at a time you know when we need to be thinking about all these things at, in our well-being so you know when you have your sip your little spoonful of syrup in the winter if you're feeling a bit poorly you know you might just think about imbuing all of these qualities that the plant has given to you so I'm going to be here for a while, so I'm just going to press pause um, while I stir this all together um, and bring it to the boil. So we want it to boil hard. So I've got this on now. Do you know what? I forgot to turn the oven on. <laughs> so it's just as well I'm pressing pause. Um, so I'll, I'll come back when it's boiling. Just meant to say, keep stirring while it's coming up to the boil, otherwise it will catch and you might get burnt sugar um, instead of delicious syrup. So keep the stirring going on. You'll start to feel it change probably a bit under your spoon as you go. Um, but keep going, keep stirring. Sing a little song or something. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now the whole thing is boiling away a good one. Um, and the danger is it will boil over onto your stove. Um, so just keep an eye on it. Um, it will make a horrible mess if it does boil over because of the sugar. Um, but just keeping it boiling and boiling um, for a good 
five minutes so that it's really, you know, the sugar's really taken. Um, and then once you've, you've done that, you can take it off the hob and, I'm sorry, I'm just keeping one eye on it. Um, you can take it off the hob and start to decant it into bottles. Now, what I would say to you is, um, if you've ever put hot liquid in glass, um, it can obviously cause the glass to break. So always make sure you warm up your bottles first. I know my dad, when he makes jam, sometimes he puts the jars in a, a low oven um, and sort of gradually brings them up to a warm point um, so that they're, A, they're sterilised and B, the glass is hot so that when it gets hot liquid put into it, it doesn't shatter because um, that would be devastating, wouldn't it, after all this work you've put in. Um, so you will also need a funnel um, that fits into the neck of the bottle that you've got. I've got my jar, I've got two funnels because I'm posh, um, and I've got one in my jam jar and one in my other jar, and I'm just going to see if it all fits in there. I mean, obviously, um, if you're organised, you'd probably make sure that you've got... Um, receptacles for the amount of water that you've put in um, and then obviously remembering half of that would have boiled away so if you've made like I have today a liter and a half of, of liquid um, you're going to lose half of that so you're looking about 750 mil maybe see what happens go with the flow okay so we're ready to put the the juice the syrup um, into the bottles. So I'm going to put mine in my big jar to start with. Um, and you just really need to take obviously great care when you're using your funnel um, and pouring out from a saucepan. It will probably make a bit of a mess. You need to be prepared for a bit of mess as with all of this. Just keeping an eye on how much it fills the jar. slowly slowly gently gently and remembering with a funnel it takes a bit of time to make it down the tube so it's really easy to overfill and leave a bit of room um, at the top um, and then you can screw your lid on or even better your Grolsch cap um, if you've got one of these kilners they've got like Grolsch caps which are are an automatic seal um, but having something hot in there will will help to seal the jar and then there you have it your syrup um, which you can then decant again into smaller bowls uh, into smaller pots for, for gifts little jars or little bottles um, and you can have it on your ice cream have a little sneaky spoonful once in a while when you're at the fridge do keep it in the fridge um, it, I don't know how long it will last. I mean, you're, it, it all depends on how sterile your bottle, bottles were and, you know, but, but just use your, use your own knowledge and your innate wisdom. I mean, I've kept mine, I'm, I'm looking to keep mine for the whole of the winter. Um, so I'm going to eke it out over the winter period. Um, but yeah, it's only sugar. It's not going to, not going to do you too much harm, I shouldn't think. See, I wouldn't be very good if I worked for the government, would I? <laughs> Don't hold me to task on this, um, but do enjoy some homemade goodness and maybe spreading the love with your family and friends. Take care, everybody. Bye.